Hi friends, welcome on board for another project. This is a 433 MHz 4 channels wireless switcher. It means you can control all of these relays and each relay independently using a remote control like this. Of course, you are not bounded to use just this type of remote control. You can use a variety of 315 or 433 MHz ASK remote controls. Let me show you how it works just briefly. If I press the A button, the device toggles the relay one, this one. And if I press the B button, because the code of the B button was not stored in the memory, it shows the, something like this on the screen. Invalid because the code was not stored and it shows the code on the display in the second row. Later on in the latest part of the video, I will show you how you can record each button, delete each one and assign each code with any of these four relays. I designed the schematic and PCB for this project using Altium Designer and shared the PCB and schematic with my friends using Altium 365 to receive their feedback, feedback and edits live on the cloud. Let me show you the bare PCB board. This is the bare PCB board, the top side and bottom side. I sent the Gerbers to PCB way and this is the results. As you can see, the fabrication quality is just perfect. Okay. Let me disconnect the board and explain the board briefly. If it get focus, okay. This is the power connector to connect the 9 volts power to the board and these are decoupling capacitors for noise reduction. This is the regulator, 5 volts regulator for the relays and this button is to record a button and this button is to delete a, a code from the memory and this is the 2 rows and 8 characters LCD. Two row and eight character, okay? And this one is the 433 megahertz ASK receiver module. If your remote control, the frequency of remote, your remote control is 315, then your receiver module should be 315 megahertz, okay? For my case, it's 433 megahertz. And this is the microcontroller, and this is the potentiometer to adjust the contrast of the LCD. If I show you from this side, do you see the microcontroller? And that component is the crystal. And these are the output connectors to connect your uh, devices. Let me show you the back side. Just a few passive components. These capacitors to reduce the noise of the relay. These capacitors for, uh, are decoupling and these pull down resistors to uh, reduce the noise of the unused pin of the LCD. And this is the ISP programming interface for the microcontroller. And you will use this table to connect your um, programmer cable to the board to program your board. And pretty much that's it. In the next step, I will go through the schematic and PCB and we will check what's going on with this board. All right, as I told you in the beginning, I have designed the schematic and PCB for this project using the Altium Designer software. And here's the homepage of Altium Designer where you have access to all of these nice tutorials. Also the learning center here. Before I continue, I highly recommend you to avoid any cracked version of this software because the cracked version are full of bugs, okay? And they will infect your computer with viruses and trojans. So instead of that, just why bother? Follow this link in my YouTube video description and activate your free, of course, free legal license. Then you will see your name here, the same as me, and you will have access to the latest version of the software with all of the features. I mean a full version of the software. Also, you can create your cloud space in the Altium 365 to upload your projects. Anyway, let's go to the schematic. 
this is the schematic diagram and this is the uh, PCB layout as you know with each project I also publish an article so to avoid making this video boring for you I skipped the explanation of the schematic and you can find it in the article just follow this link in my YouTube video description and read the article article with full details before I go to the PCB let me check the specification of this microcontroller with you the part number is 80 megahertz and it's the heart of the circuit let's go to the octo part I will write the part number here 80 megahertz okay and this is the search results and this is our part the package is deep so microchip 80 megahertz and 16 pu this is the inventory history and that was the price i think for the quantity of one and here you can download the component library i mean the schematic symbol pcb footprint and the 3d model for this component and here the general information for the component it says the maximum frequency is 16 megahertz the flash size should be here yes uh, 8 kilobyte flash and 1 kilobyte RAM size so all of the I mean the general information of the component is just in front of your eyes of course you can download the data sheet from here okay using this website you can generate the bill of materials for your project for free all of the features of this, this website is free so just bookmark this and use it for your project because it's just free nothing no problem with that anyway let's go to the pcb so as it is clear it's a two layers pcb board and i have used a mixture of smd and through hole components for this project the first golden rule in whatever pcb design is the correct placement of the component which i have followed in this pcb let me show you i have put these relays on the right edge of the pcb the microcontroller is here the power input and the regulator i mean the power supply is here on this area push buttons are here and i have put the receiver module on the bottom edge this is the correct placement of the components which you should always follow in whatever pcb you have from simple to complex the next technique is to practice to reduce the length of the ground pass that's why i used or i put these polygons this red one and this blue one on the top and bottom layer these polygons if it used correctly will reduce the length of the ground pass significantly okay and the minimum benefit of shorter length of the ground pass is less noise and better stability and in total better performance for your circuit that's why i also put these wires near the critical components in critical areas that's why i put these wires near the ground pin of the decoupling capacitors do you see that near here uh, here near the ground pin of the crystal uh, capacitors near the ground pin of the decoupling capacitors of the microcontroller these are decoupling capacitors and also put the decoupling capacitors if you have a microcontroller in your circuit put the decoupling capacitors as close as possible to the power supply pin of the microcontroller that was another technique uh, i think i covered all of the points before i go to the before i continue and explain the code I have made two minor modifications in comparison with the first prototype. I moved this deco decoupling capacitor from the top layer to bottom layer and also uh, put the connection of the ISP programming interface just on the bottom layer. Why? Because I realized you might use a different uh, receiver module here because some receiver module are shorter or longer so this this modification allows you to use a variety of receiver module here and this modification increased a space for you to put your module here because 
these module modules vary uh, in quality some of them offer better quality and more stability so you have a space here to put your favorite module here anyway let's go to the code and i will explain the code for you all right here is the code of the microcontroller and as you can see i use arduino ide let me see how many lines this code has 264 lines of code let me start from the top as you see i use these three libraries and this one is the most important one because i use this library to decode the remote control transmitted codes these are the definition of the pins nothing special and this structure the most challenging point for me in this project was dealing with the EDOPROM memory because each remote control button has two features first is the key or code of that button and second is the relay that each remote control button should control so i decided to use a structure but because we deal with more than one remote control button so we should use an array of structures the size of this array is 81 it means from 0 to 79 for codes for remote control and the latest member uh, or ad in the array is to is for something for the another special purpose that i will talk about that later on so ad means ad remote control buttons or 20 remote controls with four buttons the same as my remote control okay but you can increase this number because the EDOPROM size of this chip is around 512 bytes. So you can increase this number to 90, maybe even 100. But I decided to keep 80 to not to mess with the overflowing the EDOPROM. Maybe I'm too conservative, but it's enough for my application. Uh, let me calm down, nothing special here. Just some declaration and definition. And here, it checks if the EDOPROM of the latest EDOPROM address was filled with this constant or not. Otherwise, it calls this function. What this function does, okay? This function writes this constant in all of the 81 addresses of the EDOPROM memory using this, uh, using this EDOPROM put function, okay? So why am I doing this? Why I am doing this? Uh, it's because it's much easier to deal with the EDOPROM uh, when you write some constant in all of the addresses first. Because otherwise, you are, when you check if, Edo, if the EDOPROM address is filled or not, it handles you or it, it gives you a random number. But if you just check for this constant, you are sure uh, that that specific address of the EDOPROM is ready to be to be used to store the remote control code. Otherwise, you just skip and increase your index. Okay, the writing index, or, or I mean a counter that checks each EDOPROM address. So this condition checks if this EDOPROM, this Edo, if the EDOPROM memory is ready, or if it is if these constant values have been written already otherwise it calls otherwise it won't call so in practice this function only calls when you first connect your uh, board to the power otherwise it will be never called later on so just once in the first boot anyway let's continue this reads all of the either from data and the function is here okay reads all of the either from data Nothing special here, just some LCD. And here it checks the uh, record button and here it checks the delete button and increases and increment a counter to check if you have, if you short press or long press these two buttons. So I use this technique to check if you short press or long press. So this button, uh, this uh, condition checks if you long press the delete button and then calls this function and this one checks if you short pressed the delete button okay and this condition this 
checks if you long press the record button and this condition checks if you have short press the record button so if you remember do you remember from the beginning of the video r1 r2 so when you short press you just change the relays because you want to attach the that specific remote control button or code with each relay so r1 relay 1 relay 2 and when you short press this button it just switches between the relays okay and then when you long press the record button it calls this uh, function and saves their code in the memory and that specific index okay got it using this function either home put and goes to the uh, available address of the idoprom and writes your structure in that address and that's it that's a very nice function indeed just with one line of code you can record a structure in the idoprom so I, I explained this and here oh when you press a remote control button this function return true and this condition uh, uh, this return true and this if applies or returns true uh, then it comes down and checks if it could find the remote control in the idoprom memory do you see that uh, so this function handles the remote control key and checks if the remote control finds in the idoprom memory using this function find remote control key so where it is this function the, if, if it could find uh, the remote control key in the idoprom memory returns the relay value because the relay is one two three or four otherwise it returns zero let's come up so one two three four means relay one to four otherwise comes here and shows invalid and shows the remote control key in the second row of the lcd do you remember and that's it this is the latest uh, line or uh, this is the function should be called when we use this function here on the top this one this is from the library okay i think i covered most of the points of the code all right as i had promised in this section i will show you how i can record any remote control button in the memory and assign the code of that button to any of these four relays for example assign the button a or the code of the button a to relay one so for the first step just press that button and it shows something like this on the screen because it does not it cannot find the code of the button a in the memory so it's an invalid remote button i want to record this just short press the rec button so it means for this code for relay one relay two three four and if i press again it starts from relay one again r1 means relay one so to record this code for the relay one just long press this button again and it says relay one saved and the long press is more than one and a half seconds so just press that button for more than one and a half second and release it you will see something like this on the screen now if i press the a button it activates the relay a or toggles the relay a okay now i want to assign the button b for the relay two so naturally it says something like this on the screen that's for relay two and long press there we go now button b for the relay two there we go let's go for button c and assign this to relay number three there we go oh the device sometimes detects random codes uh, i think it's just a noise anyway it doesn't matter so now button c assigned to relay number three do you see that number three one two three now i don't like this button c for the number relay number three now i'm gonna delete this from the memory just short press the second button or the delete button so it says this code for let's let me explain this is the code and this is the position of the 
code in the Edo Pro memory and this code was assigned to relay one. Press again and position uh, number two in the Edo Pro memory for the relay two and this one. We don't we want to delete this one so just long press this button as the same as rec button for more than one and a half second and there we go it shows a message like this on the screen and it says this code was deleted from the screen now if i press the c button it does not recognize the code or the c button again but if i press a and b it, it finds the code in the memory but see, it was deleted. Do you see that? Working with this device is pretty easy. Just it takes 5 or 10 minutes and we are good to go. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to share and subscribe. See you in the next video.